Oh, all right, class. Uh, so this lecture is going to cover, you know, explaining a little bit about what rhetoric is. And it's also going to cover the assignment sheet for the rhetorical analysis essay. So, so far we've already figured out how to do analysis, you know, discussing how things work, how things function. Uh, so now we're jumping over to rhetoric, okay? So like the first time I was in college, the professor started talking about rhetoric, rhetoric this, rhetoric that, and I was sitting there, what the hell is he talking about? You know, I had to look it up in a dictionary. You know, we had to carry dictionaries back then and have phones. Um, so uh, what is rhetoric? Well, basically rhetoric is the use of words and sometimes can can also art can also be tied in like for instance in our graphic novel my friend Dahmer but is the use of words to influence or persuade people to make meaning uh, you know as an author okay and also the study of other people's words and the study of your own how you craft your own words but that is what rhetoric is the use of words study of how language is used to communicate so what we're going to be analyzing are the four main points of rhetoric um, in My Friend Dahmer. And you will choose one of the four main ones from below to focus your essay on, up on you know, that you're going to write on. So, of course, author and author credibility is, you know, how an author establishes his or her credibility, how we can believe what they say, how they can become a trustworthy source. Things to consider are the author's education, work experience, success in his field, thoroughness and validity of his research, and other ways that he reveals information about um, himself or herself. Uh, for instance, in this comic, uh, you know, um, Bagdurf, uh, you know, reveals a lot of stuff about himself that's, you know, not flattering. Uh, also, control of use of grammar, punctuation, sounding like you know what you're talking about. Uh, reputation, all these things increase author credibility and authority. And those are techniques you can use as well. Um, that's what ethos is. Ethos is author credibility. Now, thinking of the audience, pathos, um, the emotional aspect. Um, so one thing you consider is who is the primary, secondary, and tertiary audiences? In other words, who's the audience that an author is focused at? How does that affect their work and the way they write or the way they do anything or what they say? Second, who is the audience, uh, you know, that you, you, you're not necessarily writing for, but you know that you're going to, they're going to read your work. And how does that affect the way that you write? And then the tertiary audience is an audience you never expected to read your work. Like, I'm sure Backdurf didn't expect you guys to be uh, reading this in a college-level class when he wrote it. Okay, other parts of audience, when in terms of rhetoric, are thinking about how did... The uh, author craft his words or her words for uh, the particular audience. Um, you know, how did it affect word choice? How did it affect syntax, tone, you know, subject matter? Okay. So this is very similar to literary analysis when you analyze poems, but you're going to be analyzing uh, an author's uh, narration, uh, an author's uh, dialogue choices, word choices in that narration. All right, topic, genre, style, medium uh, has to do with logos and pathos, but uh, basically it's a consideration of how are you going to deliver your message as a writer or, or analyzing how another writer chose to deliver their message. You know, is it a poem? Is it a song? Is it a speech? Is it a short story? In this case, we have a graphic novel. So would be analyzing why he did this, uh, in what ways... Is a graphic novel more effective than, you know, a novel or a short story or a memoir? Uh, you know, in what ways, you know, why did the author choose that? You know, and a lot of times, you know, uh, topic genre style medium is also tied into purpose. You know, if you think about why an author is trying to get a certain thing across, uh, you know, sometimes that affects what the topic genre style or medium he or she uses will be. Okay, purpose has to do, you know, with logos, pathos, and ethos, but essentially, why is the author writing what she or he is writing? Why did they do it? And what is their purpose? What are they trying to get across to the reader? So you're looking at the motivations of the writer. You're looking at the writer's goals and what they hope to achieve. 
Now, I've included a video that has hundreds of other little minor rhetorical strategies like syntactical strategies like parallel structure or the rhetorical question, stuff like that. But these are the four main ones that I want you to focus on for this essay. I want you to choose one. Now, all the little rhetorical strategies, you know, they all kind of fall under these top four categories. Okay? All right. Now, kind of remember that this essay is an analysis, so some of the same rules that are for the poetry explication apply. It should be in third person, for example. Okay, no second person you, no I. All right, so here's a little some tips about rhetorical analysis essays. Um, you always have, you know, that first sentence or, you know, or two of the introduction that tells who the reader or who the author is, what the name of the book is, and a quick summary of what's, it, what's you know, what it's about. Um, and also you have what's called a rhetorical analysis thesis. So this is a thesis that essentially discusses you know, what you're analyzing, how the author uses rhetorical devices to make a point. Now, that's going to be very different for a lot of your essays, depending on if you're on audience or purpose. But, you know, if you're doing audience, you will discuss, you know, uh, for instance, uh, what techniques the, the author uses for his audience. Um, who is the author's audience? You know, all that's going to make up a thesis. But if you're going to be talking about purpose, you know, your thesis is going to be discussing what the purposes of your author, what's his motivations, why did he do what, he's, what, he, what he did, and what does he hope to achieve out of it. You know, for example, if it's author credibility, you're going to be, you know, giving us a, you know, a rundown of why he's a credible author, summed up, you know. Okay, so um, besides the thesis, the rest of the introduction at number three here should be sentences that discuss your main points about the author's use of rhetoric and research that you will be discussing in the essay. Kind of like foreshadowing, you know, stuff that doesn't fall in the thesis. And, you know, look, if your thesis is more than one sentence, that's fine. At this college level, you should be having more complex, you know, theses with, you know, multiple points. Okay? Look, your body paragraph should still be controlled by a main idea, you know, and that main idea has to be proving your thesis and main points, you know. And, and so you want to group your main points, you know, under, you know, a main idea that makes sense. For instance, if you're doing author credibility, you know, maybe you want to do, um, you know, his education, work experience, and the awards he was won in a body paragraph. Then move on to other things for the other body paragraphs. Okay. You know, look at... Um, you know, be sure, you know, you still have transitional sentences. Um, you still need to integrate quotes properly. Um, your conclusion should kind of wrap everything up and show that how it's all connected, you know, towards reiterating your main point or thesis. All right. Thank you, class.